I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website globalmathinstitute.com. In this series, we are preparing students for the highest level of competitions globally. I'm going to take some questions from past competitive exam papers. We'll discuss them at length, and I hope many of my subscribers will benefit. Some of you can also contact me for learning directly. The idea is to have creative thinking to solve such questions. You can contact me on the email address given here, and we can have Zoom classes one on one to prepare for the toughest competitions. In this series, we are going to take up examples from previous Olympiad contest. Here is one very interesting question, which is based on sign law. It appeared in Canadian Mathematical Olympiad, 1986. In fact, it was question number one. I would like you to pause the video, read the question, attempt, and then look into my suggestions. The question here is, in the diagram, line segments AB and CD are of length 1 while angle ABC and CBD are 90 degree and 30 degree respectively. Find AC. So diagram is given to you. The angle of 90 degrees is at B as shown here. The angle ABC. The other angle at B which is CB D is given to you as 30 degrees. The sides AB and CD are one unit each. So these are equal sides. Diagram is not to the scale. You need to find A to C. So let us say this is X. So that is what you need to find. So I hope the question is absolutely clear. We'll see how do we solve such a question. It definitely requires a lot of thinking and of course your expertise on trigonometry and the sign law. So let me first remind you what sign law is uh, for the sake of students who want to refresh it and I'm actually giving you time to provide the solution. So let's say this is a triangle ABC and these are the respective sides lowercase ABC then we know that sine A over A is equal to sine B over B and is equal to sine C over C, right? That's the sine law. The angle of 30 degrees, we could have another special triangle here to represent this angle of 30 degrees. So if the angle is 60 here, it's a right angle triangle. Then the sides are 1, 2, and square root 3. Now with that, you can start answering the question. I hope most of you must have got through some of it. Now let's look into it once again. We need to find what x is. We can begin with the triangle ABC, which is a right angle triangle. So in triangle ABC, Since it is a right angle triangle, we can write what BC is. So let me write BC 
as y. So we can write this y in terms of x. It's a right angle triangle and therefore we know 1 square plus y square is x square or we can say x square equals to 1 square plus y square and that gives you the relation that y square is equal to x square minus 1 or y is equal to square root of x square minus 1. So we get bc in terms of x. So the idea here is to write all other things in terms of x. Well, these angles are also unknown. So let's say this angle here at D, let's call this angle as theta. Now we can apply the sign law in triangle BCD. So if I look into triangle BCD, which is not a right angle triangle, so we can apply the sine law here. We know one combination of side opposite to angle of 30 degrees and we can relate y and theta. So from here we can say that sine theta over y is equal to sine of 30 degrees over 1, the side opposite. We know what y is, so we can write theta in terms of y, and then we can write y in terms of x. Sine of 30 degrees is what? Looking into this triangle, sine of 30 degrees from special triangle is half. So from here, we do get that sine theta is equal to y times half. Substituting y as square root of x square minus 1, we get this as half of square root of x square minus 1. So we, we do have now a relation which relates sine theta with the side BC. Sine theta can also be related in a bigger triangle. So now let us consider the bigger triangle which is triangle ABD. This is an obtuse angle triangle with 90 plus 30, 120 degrees angle at B. We can now again apply sine law. We know the side opposite to this is x plus 1. Correct. And therefore, I could write this as sine of 90 plus 30 degrees or 120 degrees divided by opposite side x plus 1 should be equal to sine theta divided by the opposite side which is 1. Now, sine 90 plus theta is equals to cos 30, right? So this could be written as cos 30 over x plus 1 equals to sine theta. So we get another value of sine theta, which now is also in terms of x. Sine 30, as you know, is square root 3 over 2. So we could write this as square root 3 over 2 times 1 over x plus 1 is equal to sine theta. So as you can now see that we have the value of sine theta as half of square root x square minus 1 and 3 by 2 of 1 over x plus 1. So both sine theta values can be equated. You get the idea. So we are now looking into these two relations which we have just derived for the angle sine theta.
I'll take it to the next page to solve it further. So we have half square root x square minus 1. Let me write down. So we have half square root x square minus 1 is equal to square root 3 over 2 times 1 over x plus 1. Square root 3 over 2 times 1 over x plus 1. So we equated the value of sine theta, correct? Now we have an equation which is in terms of x only. And therefore, we can easily solve this equation. Let's simplify a bit by cancelling 2's. And we'll now cross multiply. So we have x plus 1 times square root of x square minus 1 equals to square root of 3. Now at this stage, we can square both sides, right? So you get x plus 1 whole square times x square minus 1 equals to 3. We can expand this. We'll get an equation which will be of degree 4 and then we'll factor and solve. So, so at this stage we get x square plus 2x plus 1 times x square minus 1 equals to 3. So if I expand it, I get x to the power of 4 minus x square plus 2x cube minus 2x plus x square minus 1 equals to 3. So that is the equation which we need to solve. Uh, we can simplify this a bit, cancelling x squared and x squared. Bringing 3 to this side, we can write down our equation as x to the power of 4 plus 2x cubed minus 2x. And bringing 3 to this side, we get minus 4 equals to 0. So that is the equation which we land with. Now we need to solve this equation. Let me take this to the next page, which is x to the power of 4 plus 2x cubed minus 2x minus 4 equals to 0. We have x to the power of 4 minus 2x cubed minus 2x minus 4. equals to 0. So from the first two terms, I can take x cube common. I'm left with x minus 2. And in the next two terms, we have 2 common. So you can take minus 2. And we have x. I think I did a mistake here. This was plus, right? So this was plus, right? Yeah, because that is not getting factored, right? So if I take minus 2 common, I get x plus 2 here equals to 0, clear? Now x plus 2 is common. We get x cubed minus 2 equals to 0. We need to find this dimension x in the given triangle. Now, x is positive, we know x is greater than 0. And therefore, the only solution comes from x cubed minus 2 equals to 0, which gives us x cubed as equal to 2, or it gives you x as equal to cube root of 2. Correct? So that is how we actually solve this particular question. Excellent question. 
since we are applying the concepts learned in trigonometry and then also using a very good level of algebra to solve the equations. So I hope this makes sense. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send me an email on the address given. Write your comments, share your views. Your suggestions are very valuable. Thanks for your time and all the best.